Okay, and now I'm going to share the screen. Okay, Tad, I've shared my screen and are you able to see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, again, the pattern is going to be Kepele will cover the contents of this chapter. This is drafts of trigonometric functions. We'll discuss all of this and then we'll talk about the past paper questions which are related to this topic. Okay, so here are the past paper questions from this topic. And this is the basically PDF that we are going to discuss. Okay. So basically, we have different trigonometric functions, right? We have sine, cos, tan cot, secant, and cosecant. Are you familiar with these trigonometric functions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. So let's talk, uh, let's start the discussion with sine of x, okay? This is the first thing which we need to talk about. Now you will see in most of these questions, they're talking about the domain. They'll talk about domain, they'll talk about range, they'll talk about period, okay? Then they'll talk about the graphs, Okay, and then they, there's, there's a question or two where they're talking about the amplitude as well. Okay, so this is what we have in all these questions. So yeah, now we can discuss it. Okay, first trigonometric function is sine of x. If we talk about the domain and range, okay, now what exactly is domain of any function and what exactly is range of any function? These are two very important things. So we have any function, like these are trigonometric functions. It could be that you have a linear function, you have a quadratic function, you can have any function, okay? So in general, in mathematics, when we talk about functions, we talk about their domain, we talk about their range, okay? And let's see what exactly is domain and what exactly is range. So this is the function which we are talking about at the moment. The domain is basically all the values of x that would give a value of the function all those values of x are basically the domain. And for the range, we check out the values of y. This could be explained through the diagram as well. Yeah, okay. We were talking about sine. So let's talk about sine of x, okay? Here it is. All right. Now this is sine of x. Let me make the line of x-axis. All right, Saad. Now we need to study this graph at the moment, okay? We are talking about the domain and we are talking about the range, okay? If we talk about the domain, the domain has all the values of x for which we have some value of the function. So you can see in case of sine x, we have all the values on the x-axis, right? Like we have zero, then we have negative values, we have positive values. The graph is not breaking at any point. The graph is going on continuously. This means that sine of x, the domain of sine of x would be all the real numbers, okay? Are you getting my point? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so a better understanding of this could be just think about it this way. Now I'll zoom out and I'll show you all the graphs. We'll talk about all of them in detail, but for now, what do, what do you see? The graph of sine is not breaking anywhere. The graph of cos, is it breaking anywhere? No, ma'am. No, right? Very well done. Okay, let me just make this line as well. Excellent, it's not breaking. Let's talk about tan. What do you think about tan? Is tan breaking? Uh, yes, it is breaking. Okay, I'll tell you. This is the line of x-axis. Then since you have done all this, so you must be knowing that these are supposed to be the dotted lines and they are representing the break, right? If you take out, do you have your calculator in front of you? Uh. No, ma'am, but I can, I have the application. Okay, okay, okay. Just take that out and I'll tell you one thing. One second. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just use the application and see what is the value of tan at pi by 2. Just check tan pi by 2. Uh, tan pi by 2. Yeah, and you would get something very different.
Guess what are you getting? Uh, one point five seven. Oh, okay. What is your calculator's mode? Make sure that it is in radians. Okay, I'll tell you. It's tan pi by two, and that would give you error. Okay, if, uh, I'm not sure if you would be able to convert the mode through that application or not. But you know, the angles we define angles two ways. We can either write them down in degrees or in radians. Okay, so yeah, if yes. your angles are in radians, you need to make sure that the mode of your calculator is in radians. Okay, so if you check the value of tan pi by two, that would give you an error. Okay, and this is what I wanted you to notice. This is the graph of tan, and it is breaking. It is breaking at pi by two. It is breaking at three pi by two. It is breaking at minus pi by two. It is breaking at minus three pi by two. These are the dotted lines, and they are just representing the discontinuity. Okay, this is not a continuous graph. These lines are representing the discontinuity. So, what do you think about tan? Is it a smooth graph or is it a discontinuous graph? Uh, it is a discontinuous graph. Very good, excellent. Okay, let's talk about cosecant. We'll talk about all these in detail. For now, I just want to emphasize on something. What do you think about cosecant? Is it a continuous graph or is it you know breaking at some points? It is breaking. Again, it is. Yes, it is. Very good. These vertical lines are basically they're supposed to be dotted lines. And I don't know why, but like they did not break them, but they are supposed to be dotted lines, and only then you would be able to understand that. They are basically just to represent the discontinuity at these points. Okay, very good. And then if we talk about secant and cotangent or cot, again you will see that both these graphs are breaking. Okay, so in short, yes, what do we notice? We have noticed that the graph of sine and cos only they are not breaking. Okay, only they are continuous. And why was I talking about all this? I was talking about all this because I wanted to talk about the domain of all the trigonometric functions. Okay, as we noticed, the domain of sine and cos. Since the graphs did not break, so if we talk about the domain, we have all the values on the x-axis. So for that, we write down all the real numbers. Set of x. The domain is basically all the real numbers. What is a real number? A real number is every number that you have studied in maths. Zero is a real number. Minus one is a real number. Two is a real number. One by two is a real number. Under root two is a real number. All the different varieties of numbers, all of them come under the branch of real numbers. Okay, so you need to understand. That if your graph is not breaking, if it is continuous, if it is defined for every value of x, in that case, the domain is going to have all the values on the x-axis. And when we say all the values of x-axis, we can write it down this way: that x belongs to the set of real numbers. Okay. Now, like since you have joined late, so in the beginning. Uh, we'll talk about those chapters again once all the previous students come back. But for now, what you need to understand is that this is the set of real numbers, and it has all the numbers in maths. Okay, since the graph of sine x and cos x, since they were not breaking, that is why the domains have all the real numbers. Yes, did you understand this thing? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's talk. For now, we're just talking about the domain. We are just talking about the Domain and we are looking at different trigonometric functions. Let's talk about y equals tan x. Now tan x is the trigonometric function, and we need to talk about the domain. Now, what exactly have they written? They are saying that for the domain of tan x, again x belongs to real numbers. We have all the real numbers. We have all the numbers in maths except these. We do not have these. Okay. It says x belongs to real numbers, but x is not equal to two k plus one into pi by two. Now, what exactly is this? You'll understand that. Let's go to the graph of tan x. Okay, here's the graph of tan x. I just want you to tell me on which points exactly the graph is not defined. Uh, 
pi by not 2 defined. yeah okay yes the, the the discontinuity basically and on this point what is this point uh 3 pi by 2 very good and then minus pi by 2 and minus 3 pi by 2 very well done minus pi by 2 and then minus 3 pi by 2 now since you have you are you're done with the math syllabus of fsc so you must be knowing that tan ka jo graph hai, it go and all these graphs we can draw them like till negative infinity and till positive infinity okay yahan pe to sirf choti si like humne sirf uh, in values pe graph ko draw kiya 0 se 2 pi pe but i can draw it for 4 pi as well i can draw it for 6 pi as well right itna ye aapko yaad yes ma'am okay perfect yes ma'am all right now we see that in case of tan, if we talk about the values of x, we have all the values of x except pi by 2, except 3 pi by 2, except minus pi by 2, and except minus 3 pi by 2. Now, how do we write this down? How do we define this domain? In case of continuous functions like sine and cos, I was able to write down that x belongs to real numbers because it had all the real numbers. In this case, I need to exclude pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, minus pi by 2, and minus 3 pi by 2, okay? So, let's go and see how to write this down, okay? Now, look at this. We can't include all of them, so we will just write a general formula. Yes, exactly. So, they're saying that k is an integer. This is an integer. When we talk about integers, we have numbers like you know, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, then we have 1, 2, and 3, okay? These are your integers, okay? Yes, ma'am. Just, just give me one second only, only one second. No worries, ma'am. All right. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so uh, I was telling you about integers. Okay, so Saad, in the very first class, we talked about all these, uh, you know, sets that of real numbers, integers, odd numbers, etc. So let me give you a quick idea. If we talk about integers, let me write it down properly. So we have all the positive whole numbers. We have all the negative whole numbers and we have zero as well. Okay, so zero plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three and so on at the moment i'm just talking about the set of integers since you have not studied that but it is used here that is why i wanted to give you a quick idea okay so these are integers all right what exactly are we talking about here we were talking about the domain of tan x and they're saying that x has all the real numbers except these and we also uh, Notice that the graph was breaking at some points. Now you will see when we will plug in these values in K, we will get some numbers. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, the first value since K belongs to integers, the first value of integer, let's say it's zero. So it would be this would become 2K would become zero. So it would be pi by two. All right. Next, I'll plug in 1. When I'll plug in 1, I will get 3 pi by, two. pi by 2. Next, let's plug in 2. When I'll plug in 2, I would get what? I would get 5 uh, pi five. by 2. Okay, similarly, I can talk about the negative values as well. When I will plug in, let's say I plug in minus 3. Or let's say I plug in minus 2, minus 2, okay? So when I plug in minus 2, I would get minus 4 plus 1. That would be minus 3 pi by 2, okay? And this is yes. how we are defining all these. So this thing that x is not equal to 2k plus 1 into pi by 2 are basically these numbers. And on graph, we have seen that the graph was breaking at pi by 2, 3 pi by 2 right pi by 2 3 yes, pi by 2 minus pi by 2 and minus 3 pi by 2 so i just wanted to explain you properly this is why they have written it this way so are you comfortable with this yes ma'am 
Okay, perfect. So I am going to wrap this. All right. Again, let's just talk about cortex. This is cortex. Let's go and check out the graph, and then we would be able to understand things properly. Okay, here is cortex. Let me make a line. This is x, and yeah. Okay, now we need to see that on which points exactly is my graph breaking. So it is breaking at what zero, then pi, pi, and minus Ooh, pi. Yes, okay, minus pi. minus pi, right? Okay, and then this means that it would be breaking on two pi as well. I cannot see that, but this is obvious. Like if I yes, Uh, draw the graph again for till four pi. I would see that the graph would break at two pi, at three pi, at four pi, at all of them, right? So it is breaking on zero, then pi, then two pi, then minus pi, and then minus two pi. So this is what I can see. Let's go and see how to write down the domain. Okay. So x has all the real values. X belongs to the set of the real numbers, but it does not have a few values. What are those values? Here are those those values, right? Like as I told you earlier as well, the, the set of integers include zero, one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three. So it would not include zero. It would not include pi, two pi, then minus pi, and minus two pi, right? And this is what we observe to the graph of cortex as well, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. Then let's talk about Secant x quickly. This chapter is very easy. I'm just spending time in explaining this, just so you know things make sense. We are talking about secant x. Let's go and see the graph of secant. Okay, here's the graph of secant. Now this time around, I want you to tell me on which points exactly the graph is breaking. Uh, three pi by two, pi by two, minus pi by two, and minus three pi by two. Very good. Three. Pi by two, pi by two, minus pi by two, and then minus three, pi by two. Very good. Okay. So this is what we see. That is perfect. Now we need to write this thing down properly, right? Using the general yes, form. So what do you think? What could be that? Again, we can write down that x belongs to all the real numbers, but x. Does not belong to what? Uh, it would be the same as uh, the yeah. tangent one. Same. Very so good. Two x yes. plus one. Excellent. Very into well pi by two. Very good. Very good. Okay. So yes, you were right. This is what we're gonna have. Excellent. And then for cosecant x, we have same as we had for cot. Okay. So obviously, for any t, I would not expect you to You know, um, on paper, like in the exam, do things logically, think about it, and then do no. I would want you to make hundred, uh, you know, shortcuts for yourself. Like once we're done with all the syllabus, you can just you know take out some white A4 papers, use some color colored markers, and just write these things down because in exam you we won't be having this much time. Okay, that you first make the graph and then think about it. So no, this is just for your understanding. Let's just quickly wind this up. Let's talk about cosecant. Okay, so here we have cosecant, and this is breaking at zero, at pi, at minus pi. So it is same as what we did for. Uh, cotangent. Yes. All right. Very good. Okay. Perfect. So now we are done with the domain. Anything that you have not understood for the domains? Any confusions? No, ma'am. All right. Okay. No, no problem. Now let's talk about the range. Here's the range. Okay. Now, when we were talking about the domain, I was looking at the x-axis only. Now you'll see, I look at the y-axis only. Okay. When we talk about the range, we look at the values of y. So here we have. The first trigonometric function that is y equals sine x, and the range is starting from minus one and it is ending at one. Let's see why do we have that. Now this is sine x. 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's a sine x. And now let me make the okay. So okay, they have already made the x's there. Like their x's a bit different. We usually make the x's on you know um x equals zero. So that is good. Let's make it here. This is my y axis. Okay. And now I am interested in seeing, in checking out the range. So when I say range, I look at the y axis only. And if I talk about the graph, what do I see? The maximum point is one. The minimum point is minus one, right? The minimum point is minus one. And every time, like in total, in the graph of sine x, the maximum value of y or the maximum value of sine x is one. And the minimum value of sine x is minus one. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am. Right. So that is why they have written that the domain is between minus one and one, and minus one and one are included. That is why they have used equal to sine as well. Okay. Any confusions with this? No, ma'am. Okay. Perfect. Let's talk about the next function. That is cos x, and again we're talking about the range now. Okay, so if I talk about cos x again, we have the same range. Let's go and see. Okay, so I will quickly make the. It's okay if I if I even if I talk about the other axes, that is mathematically correct. But just for the sake of understanding, I'm making it here. So this is the y-axis, and this was the x-axis. When we talk about domain, we check out the the x-axis. When we talk about the range, we look at the y-axis. Okay, what is this again? The maximum value is one, and the minimum value is minus, minus. one. The minimum value is minus one, and the maximum value is one. That is why we have defined the range to be um, greater than equal to minus one and less than equal to one. Okay, right. It's good. Let's talk about tan x now. Here they are saying for tan x we have all the values on the y-axis. Let's see why is that. Okay, so here is tan x. For tan x, I'll check out the y-axis only. And what do I see? The graph of tan x is going on continuously and it's not stopping. It looks like it is stopping here, but it is not. Okay, it would go on continuously. That is why they are saying. That the range of tan x is y belonging to the set of real numbers. We have all the numbers on the y-axis. Okay, here we do not have any minimum or maximum. If we look at all these curved lines, they are going on continuously, right? All of these yes, lines are same. They are going down continuously. They are going up continuously. So we have all the real numbers. That is why we have. Define the range to be this. Next one is yes. cortex. Let's check that out. Here's cortex. Okay. So again, for cortex, we are let's see. This is the y-axis. Okay. Now for cortex, I would want you to tell me what would be the range. For range, it be yes. Mm -hmm. All all real. The uh, okay. yes, all real numbers. Excellent. Okay. So we write it down this way. Y belongs to the set of real numbers and we do not have any exceptions we are not excluding any value from that okay we have all the real values so we have this perfect okay now if we talk about secant x we have a different range so it says y is greater than or equal to 1 and y is less than or equal to minus one. Okay, for the range, let's see why exactly are they saying so. So we have to go to the graph of secant x. Okay, here's the graph of secant x. Now I'll quickly make the y-axis. This is my y-axis. This is the origin. This point is zero. Okay. This point is one and this point is minus one. Now, what do you see? You see that throughout the graph, throughout the graph, all these bars, all these U-shaped bars are starting after one. Okay. And then if we look at this, 
all these curves or whatever you want to call them they are starting after minus 1 so between 1 and minus 1 we do not have any graph right we do not have yes, any graph here so what does that mean this means we need to exclude this range we need to exclude 1 and we need to exclude all the values between 1 and minus 1 we do have some value on 1 and minus 1 but we do not have any value between these so this is how we write it down y is greater than equal to 1 because this is 1 so y is greater than 1 or it is equal to 1 right this is yes, why we have it that way and the other part was y is less than or equal to minus, minus 1 so again y is less than minus 1 or it is equal to minus 1. Any confusion? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Perfect. Okay. Let's talk about the last thing now. All right. So, this was for secant x and again, we are done. We just have cosecant x. Okay. So, here's cosecant. Again, this is 1. This is minus 1. We do not have any graph between 1 and minus 1. We have some values at 1, at 1, and then we have some values at minus 1. So, again, what would be the range in this case? Uh, it would be the same as cosine that we will exclude all the numbers between 1 and minus 1. one, one minus 1. Very good, okay? So, we, we are writing it down this way. And you can write it down in multiple ways. You will see when we will talk about past paper questions there, they have not written exactly the same way but still some of those options would be the answers because they are meaning the same okay so we know that in maths we can write down we can represent things different in a different way but that does not mean that's wrong okay so again for yes. cosecant this is what we are gonna have okay perfect so this was about the domain and range and now the last thing which we need to talk about is the period Okay. Do you have any idea about what is a period of a function? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. All right. No problem. So again, for defining period, I'll talk about the trigonometric functions and we'll talk about their graphs. Let's talk about sine x first. Okay. Again, for period, I am going to check out the x-axis and yeah, for it's better that I talk about this graph. Oh, no, not even this one. Okay. But at least you are familiar with these graphs already, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, this is the period. The fact that the graph of sine x would be repeated after this point, it would be going on like this again, means that 0 to 2 pi. So, 2 pi would be the period. Okay. Uh, let me explain this properly. No, ma'am. I understand. All right. Okay. Perfect. For, for understanding the period, you need to see after how much time, after how many angles is the graph repeating its shape. Okay. So, forget about, let's say this is the graph of sine only. Okay. Now, if this is sine x, I see that after 2 pi, the graph is changing its shape. Okay, if I check this thing out, again from 0 to 2 pi, the shape is same and then again the shape would be repeated. So, the length of this is 2 pi, right? The length of this red line is 2 pi. That is why the period is 2 pi. Yes. Okay. Oh, all right. So, yes. Did you understand it completely? Yes, ma'am. All right. Perfect. So, that is why... In case of sine x, it is 2 pi. In case of cos x, it is 2 pi. Let's go and see why it is 2 pi for cos x. All right. Here, again, this is the graph and this is the length. And this length is 2 pi. You know that the graph of cos x would be repeated after this point And that is why we are only going to consider the length of the red line. That is 2 pi. Okay. 
So this is why yes. the, the period is two pi for cos x. Okay. Let's talk about tan x quickly. All right. Here is tan x. Now I'll talk about tan x. So what do I see? I see that. Let me just. Yeah. I see that. The repetition is happening after pi. Very good. Excellent. Okay. It's repeating after pi. It is from pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 and the length would be pi. Again, this is also pi. So this means that it would be pi. Very good. Let's see what is happening in case of, let's say, secant x. So where's secant? All right, here it is. Okay, this is secant. This is zero. And what do I see? I am going to notice that the shape would be repeated after two pi, okay? Just like this, the shape is repeated after 2 pi, right? Yes, ma'am. Are you sure that you have understood this? Yes, ma'am. All right, perfect. Let's see what's happening for cortex. What do you think? What is happening for cortex? Uh, this is the repetition is happening after pi. Very good. Excellent. Okay. So for cortex, we have pi and for secant x, we had 2 pi. And let's see what do we have in case of cosecant x. All right, here it is. And yes, what do you think? Um, this is also 2 pi. Very good. Perfect, okay. Now for exam, we are done with all the discussion. I will talk about the uh, past paper questions. But for exam, I don't want you to think about things logically and stuff like that. I just want you to memorize this table. And I'm pretty sure that you would be able to uh, because, you know, for the other students uh, who are basically coming from the A-level background, they have the data book and everything. So things are very difficult for them. Okay. So I'm telling you again and again, you would be able to do better than all the other students. Okay. So please make sure that you have all this on your fingertips since you are, you know, you, you did your FSE last year. So it's very important for you to revise, to recall all the old concepts just so you are able to understand things easily. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So this is done. Next, we have these shapes and we'll talk about them uh, like when we are doing the questions. All right. So this is good. Let's talk about these questions. Okay. Now, the first question says, the domain of sine x is, what is the domain of sine x? So we have discussed uh, this. Yes. All, okay. all real numbers. Very good. Okay. So this is what we discussed. We know that the set uh, of x belongs to the set of real numbers. So that is why the answer is going to be a okay yes all right let's talk about the second question we need to talk about the range of cosine function so what is the range for range we you need to recall the shape of cosine you need to think about the values of y that i've told you earlier as well and now you would know that the range was what the range was uh, this it was okay? all yes all range all okay no this is from we are minus one. Talking about cosine. Okay, we're talking about cause basically. So when we talk about cause, we have the range between minus one and one. Okay. This is yes, cause. So this is the range of y it is between minus one and one. Okay. Yes, but you do not have that thing written clearly. You need to understand all these answers and then pick up your answer okay yes, so um all right the first option says i i'll tell you how to understand these okay the range of cosine function is this set belongs all the x such that x is a real number and its intersection with this okay so this means 
that in us in one you have you have studied sets right yes ma'am so you have two sets this is the set of real numbers it has it has um, zero then it has one it has minus one then it would also have one by two let me write it down properly it has all the decimal numbers it has 0 0.1 it has minus 0 0.1 it has minus one it has one it has all the numbers okay this is the set of real numbers and then this is another set and this set has all the let me write it down properly All right, this is a set of real numbers. And then we have another set. This one, it has minus one, zero, and one. When we talk about the intersection of these two sets, we just talk about the common numbers, okay? So the common numbers which are coming in both, these are what? Minus uh, one? Minus one, zero, and one. Yeah, but, but we do not have exactly minus one zero and one we have all the values that are between, between. minus one and zero. yeah exactly okay very good so that is why the answer is going to be a why isn't b the answer because uh, because hmm? yes because it, uh, because it doesn't have the zero in between yeah, it just it, it, it only has minus one and one. It does not have all those 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0. It does not include all those. Okay. All right. Yes, what about D? Why isn't D, D, D not the answer? So D says all the real numbers minus this set. So that would have been opposite. We are subtracting this thing that actually is the answer, right? That is why A yes, is the choice. Okay, perfect. So let me just erase this. Okay, let's talk about the third question. So what do you think for the third one? Okay, it says the domain of tangent function. So we are going to talk about the domain of tangent. This is tangent function. This is the domain. We have all the uh, real values except these yes ma'am so let's okay, plus see. One, five, five. yeah okay so what do you think what would be the answer in this case uh b option very good excellent perfect okay then the fourth question is about the period of cotangent function so we have discussed period again for period we talk about the x-axis we talk about cot in this case and what is the period it would be pi just pi. Perfect. So it would be pi. Very good. All right. Let me zoom out now. Okay. Now we need to talk. Uh, now we need to talk about the graph of sine function. Okay. This would be B option. It's very lovely. Very well done. Excellent. Okay. Because the graph of sine is of the shape. Perfect. It would be B. Okay, then we have this question. It says the domain of cosine function is yes, the domain. Okay, now this time around we're talking about the domain it of would be real numbers. Perfect. So it would be A. Very good. The next question says graph of cosine function is now B, we'll B. Perfect. Very well done. Excellent. Okay, let's talk about the ninth one. It says range of cosecant function. Okay, now let's go and see where's the cosecant function. So here's the cosecant function. What do you think? What would be the range? Uh, all real numbers except for the numbers between 1 and minus 1. Very well done. So how to put that in words? Um. It would be C option. Very good. Okay. Excellent. So it cannot be A. It cannot be B. Because B is saying that it would be all the values between 1 and minus 1. Right? Opposite. Yeah. And so that is why the answer is C. Perfect. 
the period of secant function okay now we need to talk about the secant function and then the period okay what do you think yeah two pi very good very well done excellent it would be two pi okay then we have this question it's the 11th one it says which graph is of tangent function uh option d very good very good excellent so but option a is also like d yeah okay I, I, it's the opposite basically okay so you you're confused between a and d so i'll show you d is basically for cortex okay for d the, the range is going the bar is going this way and when we talk about tan it's going this way okay so this is the difference which you need to understand right yes. so you were right initially the answer is going to be d okay very good let's talk about the next one okay then we have the range of sine function yes this is easy um this would be option b very good excellent okay because when we talk about range we know that we look at the y value and that is between 1 and minus 1 but they are, the the examiner is not writing it down that clearly they have used some different wording so we need to just understand the idea okay perfect okay the graph of secant function okay now yes um it's okay that if we are referring to the sorry one second only it's okay if we are referring to the graphs again and again but it but it's good that we think about it directly as well okay if we talk about secant function are you familiar yes. with the graph of cos x directly uh right the graph x. of cos x yes, so i know i do understand that we are comfortable with the graph of sin cos and tan and we are not that comfortable with you know secant cosecant and cot okay that's okay you have four options by now you know that a is for cot right so a is not yes, going to be the answer and b is for sin so b is not the answer you must be confused with c and d how do you get secant function you get secant function by doing what by doing 1 over cos x okay yes ma'am right sir do you do you know this yes ma'am okay perfect so basically we have all these trigonometric functions sin sin cos and tan is good for cot you need to do we do 1 over tan x for secant we do 1 over cos x and for cosecant we do 1 over sin x okay so at the moment yes. we are talking about secant function when we talk about secant function we know it is 1 over cos x so you need to think about the graph of cos i can make the graph of cos over here between the space so this means d would be the answer right i would i yes. i would be able to make the graph of sin here so this would be the graph of this graph would be the graph of 1 over sin that would be cosecant okay this is how you can keep this thing in your mind if you are comfortable with sin and cos you would be comfortable with secant and cosecant you know that secant is 1 over cos so you need to think about any graph between which you can make the graph of cos x and that would be your you know tr uh, trick so yes, did you understand this yes ma'am okay perfect let's talk about the graph of cotangent now so what do you think this is very simple uh, c option perfect if we talk about the range of cotangent function so what do you think uh range of uh, it would be all real numbers okay very well done excellent so it would be a perfect okay now we have something tricky that we did not discuss the question says what would be the range of the function of 2 sin 7x okay now we have 
a different function we do not have the typical sin x cos x tan x we have two sin 7x and we have tan 3x okay how is it going to affect your choice so i'll tell you this is your x axis sorry that is was that was your y axis this is your x axis and i'll make the graph of sin x first this is the graph of sin x okay and this has one here and it has minus one here and now i am going to make the graph of two sin x so it would be this one this would have two and it would have minus two okay so what you need yes. to understand is that whatever number is coming here your range would be determined through that if we had sin 7x the answer would have been a in this case we have two sin 7x so the answer would be different what would be the answer um yes when we talk it, about range we talk about the values on y axis okay so it is going yes, to be it would be uh, minus 2 into very good so the answer would be c so the the thing is the thing which you need to understand is in a moment we'll talk about the domain as well but for range when you do not have the typical case when you do not have what we usually you know we usually have sin x cos x tan x in that case you will talk about the number that is written right next to the function the coefficient of your trigonometric function and that would help you find the range okay perfect let's talk about <clears throat> yes what do we do about the 7x yeah i'll tell you the 7x is going to affect the uh, period basically right or the domain it would affect the period or domain and we'll check okay. that for the 17th question this 7x is not going to have any impact on the range the range would just be affected by this number okay yes ma'am okay let's see how things change okay now my question from you is sad what is the domain of simple tan x here it is the domain of tan x this yes, is what we have discussed okay now when we are doing tan 3x something would be changed yes uh, all right so it, when uh, we are multiplying any number with x we are going to divide that number for the domain okay so i will divide 3 so when i will divide 3 i am going to divide this thing by 3 so that would be just you know multiplying it with 1 by 3 and this would give yes, me 2k plus 1 pi by 6 so the answer is going to be d uh d option yes ma'am right so always yes, remember domain would be affected by the coefficient of x range would be affected by the coefficient of the trigonometric function if you have something being multiplied with x you will divide it for finding the domain if you have something that is being multiplied with the function like in this case we had 2 so you will directly multiply that with your old range uh, that was 1 minus 1 okay yes all right now we just have some more questions left so that we will end the class once we are done with these okay then we have the 18th question it says the domain of 2 cot 3x i don't care about this number it has nothing to do with the domain this number is going to affect the domain what is what exactly is the domain this is the domain uh, would, initially and now yes, it would become what we would we would divide the 3 very good this. so it would be uh, yes what do you think uh, yes ma'am option b very well done perfect excellent okay now let's talk about the 19th question okay now we did not talk about amplitude but amplitude is just the one sided height for example if i talk about the amplitude of 1 sin x it would be 1 it would be the height of your wave okay it would be 1 right if i talk yes, about the amplitude of 1 cos x it would be again 1 right this is how we determine the amplitude 
so again the uh, question about amplitude would come with sine or cos like for these functions not for you know the cos secant and secant ones because this is how we find the amplitude now what if you had minus 17 sin 14x in that in the, case um, yeah the amplitude yes, yeah. is going um, to be minus 17 no it would be 17 i'll tell you when we talk about amplitude we only talk about the height okay in this case, the graph would be again the graph of a sine function, but the only difference would be that instead of 1, it would be 17, okay? So you basically pick up this number and write down its mod. Are you getting, do you know what mod is? Mod is the positive form of any negative number, right? So it would be 17. Yes, Amplitude is just the height and you know that heights can never be negative, okay? That is why it is going to be positive only. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Very good. And then the last one is the period of cos 3x plus 7. Now, this time around, we are doing multiple things. We have multiplied x with 3. Let's see what exactly is the period initially. The period initially in case of cos is 2 it's pi. 2 pi. Okay. So, it is 2 pi. Now I've multiplied 3 with it. So I would I would do what? I am going to divide this thing by 3, right? Yes, ma'am. And the answer is going to be B. Um, okay? Yes, ma'am. Because for period again, we, ch we check out the X. So if something was being multiplied with X, we divide that and that is why the answer is B. Any, any confusions in this lecture? Anything that you were not able to understand in all these past paper questions? No, ma'am. All right. That is perfect then. I'll stop the recording. And then if you have any further questions, you can just ask me directly.